Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Eight: Momentum, Impulse, and Collisions, Video Two. Today's topic is conservation of momentum. The objectives are to understand conservation momentum is the consequence of Newton's laws. To understand the difference between conservation momentum and the conservation of mechanical energy. To be able to solve collision problems using the law of conservation of momentum. Let's. Take a look at the situation of two skaters pushing off each other. The force of the skaters exerting on each other for an action is x. That means they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So here is the free body diagram on A. Here is the free body diagram on B. As you can see, the net force on A is from B. The net force on B is from A, and they are equal and opposite. So, from the individual object point of view, if we consider the internal force F one equals negative F two, so the force on A equals to negative force on B, the collision time is the same for both. Therefore, the impulse has to be the same and opposite. Impulse equals a change in momentum. That means changing momentum on A has to be equals to changing momentum on B. We arrange this equation. We derive that total change of momentum equals to zero. If if there is no change, that means momentum is constant. So this is a direct consequence of Newton's third law. From every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Now, from the system point of view, the vector sum of the external force is zero because the vector sum of the total force is just the normal force and gravity, and they cancel out each other. Therefore, the change in momentum has to be zero because the sum of the force, the external force, equals the change in momentum over change of time. If there is no change in momentum, that means momentum is conserved. This is consequence of Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Conservation momentum means、uh, momentum in x direction, in y direction, and in z direction. They are all constant. Conservation momentum versus conservation of mechanical energy. Conservation of momentum is more general than the principle of conservation of mechanical energy, because in most cases momentum is conserved in any collision, but mechanical energy is only conserved when the internal forces are conservative. That means when internal forces are gravity or the spring. So when the two cars、uh, have a spring attached to them. Are colliding. That means in that case, moment both momentum and mechanical energy are conserved. But in most cases, momentum is conserved. Total mechanical energy are not conserved. Let's take a look at this example. A marked man holds a rifle of mass ah、uh, three kilograms loosely in his hand and let it recoil freely when. Fired, so he fires a bullet of five grams horizontally with a velocity relative to the ground of three hundred meters per second. That's a bullet's velocity. Question is, what is the recoil velocity of the rifle, and what are the final momentum and the kinetic energy of the bullet and of the rifle? So there are three questions, right? What is recoil velocity of the rifle, and what is the final momentum and the kinetic energy of the bullet? And again, what is the final momentum and the kinetic energy of the rifle? So the first thing is you draw a diagram of the situation. So here is a diagram. Here's the momentum before is zero, momentum after is also zero. That's the principle of conservation of momentum. So P X equals zero equals M B V B. The bullet momentum plus the rifle's momentum. So from here we can solve for rifle's velocity rearrange by rearranging the equation. Write down everything、uh, is given to you and substitute you solve. So you have negative point five meters per second. This is rifle's momentum. That makes、uh, rifle's velocity. That makes sense because rifle should recoiling back. That's why it's negative and its speed should be much much smaller than the. Bullet speed. That is because rifle has a bigger mass, much bigger mass than the bullet's mass. Now let's see what are the final momentum and kinetic energy of the bullet. So you simply substitute the numbers with the units. You you have one point five kilograms times meter per second. That's the momentum of the bullet, and the kinetic energy of the bullet is two hundred twenty five joules. 
You do the same thing for the rifle. The rifle should have a negative 1.5 kilograms times meters per second. You see the rifle's momentum should be the same and opposite of the bullet's momentum. The rifle lost this much momentum and bullet gained that momentum. That's why the total momentum is zero. The kinetic energy of the rifle is much, much smaller than kinetic energy of the bullet because kinetic energy is directly proportional to the velocity squared. So less velocity means much less of uh, kinetic energy. So let's take a look. So the bullet and rifle have equal and opposite momenta after interaction because they were subject to equal and opposite impulse. However, the bullet acquires much greater kinetic energy than rifle because the bullet travels a longer distance than the rifle during interaction. Remember, we have the work. There's more work done on the bullet. It's the same force on the bullet and on a rifle. Inside a rifle, the bullet travels a much longer distance. Now let's consider another example. So two gliders moving toward each other on frictionless linear air track, that linear means one di dimension in the x direction. After they collide, B moves away with the final velocity of two meters per second. What is the final velocity of A? And how do the changing momentum and in velocity compare for the two gliders? So here is the situation. Two gliders given to you, initial velocity for A and B. And when they collide, they they kind of touching each other, and this is after collision. So again, the uh, net force on total system is zero. So momentum is conserved. Momentum before equals momentum after. So what is the, this is the given quantity they are asking. What is the final velocity of a glider A? So to find the final velocity of a glider A, you substitute everything in. You get a glider A is 0.4 meters per second going back to the left. What is the final velocity of A? How do the change in momentum and in velocity compare for the two gliders? We know the change should be the same. The change in momentum in glider A is negative 1.2. Therefore, the change in momentum for glider B has to be positive 1.2. The change in A equals negative change in B. This is because the impulse are the same and opposite. How does the velocity compare? The velocity on A is much smaller than the velocity on B. This is, again, because the mass difference. The mass of A is bigger than the mass of B. That's why the velocity of A has to be less than velocity of B. Okay, the two interacting gliders undergo changing momentum that are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. However, the velocity change is different because two gliders has different mass. The less massive glider have greater acceleration, hence greater velocity change. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So two battling robots sliding on a frictionless surface. Robot A with a mass 20 kilograms initially moves 2 meters per second parallel to the x-axis. It collides with robot B, which has mass 12 kilograms and initially at rest. After collision, robot A is moving at 1 meters per second in a direction that makes an angle alpha equals to 30 degrees with its initial direction. What is the final velocity of robot B? So this is two-dimension collision. Remember, momentum is conserved. That means momentum in each direction is constant. So here is robot A. Here is robot B from top view. This is before collision. Only in... Total momentum is only in the x direction. Momentum in the y direction is zero. Here is after collision. Robot A moves in the alpha direction. What is direction of robot B? You probably say, how do how do you know robot B is moving downward? Well, momentum has to be conserved. Before in the y is zero. After in the y has to be zero. So A has a positive y momentum. So B must have a negative y momentum. So let's apply conservation momentum. Again, the force, this is because the force is internal, only between A and B. There is no outside net force. So the momentum in the x direction is conserved, and momentum in the y direction is conserved. So you write down what you know, what each quantity, the mass, the mass of A and B, the velocity of A, 
before after the velocity of b before and after in both x direction and y direction then you substitute in you got vbx and vby then you can figure out what v equals to remember v is a, a vector quantity so to find that vector quantity you have to use the pythagorean theorem for its magnitude you have to use inverse tan to find its direction so that's how you do it so this is the same as adding any two vectors check your understanding a spring-loaded toy sits at rest on a horizontal frictionless surface when the spring releases, the toy breaks into three equal mass pieces, A, B, and C, which slide along the surface. Piece A moves off the negative x direction, while piece B moves off in the negative y direction. What are the signs of the velocity component of C, and which of the three pieces move, uh, is moving the fastest? So again, in order to do that, you have to draw a picture. So... They were both at rest. All of a sudden, it's breaking into three pieces. A is in the x direction, negative. Y is negative y. So C has to be in that direction. Why is that? Because total momentum before is zero. Total momentum after has to be zero. So all the vectors has to cancel out. So C must have a positive A and a positive B. Which of the three has to move fastest? Okay, so momentum of C has to be equal to momentum of A and B add together. So C must have greater momentum, therefore greater velocity because they all have the same mass. So C because VC equals VA plus VB. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.